so precious, so very dear to me. He loves me with such tender love, his love so faithfully. I could not live apart from him, I love to feel him now. And so we walk together, my Lord and I. Sometimes I'm faint and weary, he knows that I am weak. And so he bids me lean on him, his help I gladly seek. He leads me in the path of light beneath the sunny sky. And so we walk together, my Lord and I. I tell him all my sorrows, I tell him all my joys. I tell him all that pleases me. I tell him what annoys. He tells me what I ought to do. He tells me how to try. And so we talk together, my Lord and I. He knows that I am longing somewhere is so to win and so he bids me go and speak that loving word for him he bids me tell his wondrous love and why he came to die and so we walk together my lord and i amen and our title this afternoon All of us boys and girls One more time Alone against a giant Today we are going to learn how to face a giant How to face Okay, thank you so much. Somebody's talking. Okay. I have some exciting stories, but I'll wait for you to keep quiet. Okay. Are we all quiet? Okay. I hope we have heard of the word giant. Okay. Giants are people that are so tall, so huge, and normally very, very arrogant. Very? Arrogant. I mean, when they step somewhere, everybody is scared. Everybody is? Scared. I just want to tell you of one giant that I knew. When I was young like you, there used to be a giant. There used to be? A giant. His name was called John Paul Ofono. John Paul? Ofono. He was a Ugandan, right? Was he a Ugandan? Yeah. Could have been a Sudanese, but he was here in Uganda. How many have heard of that name Ofono? It actually became a Luganda word to mean a what? A giant. When I want to translate uh, alone against a giant, I will say in Uganda, I had to So John Paul Ofono became popular for being a giant. He was around seven feet and ten inches. He was very, very tall. He was very and during that time I remember Peps came up with a, a, a giant bottle of this size. Yeah? So all sodas began producing huge bottles. By then there were glass, glass uh, bottles. Teachers, did you ever test that soda that was in a huge bottle like this but glass? What was its name? Oh, for no. 
it was called a funnel. So by then we had small, I think 300 milliliters of soda bottles and they introduced Ofono, and everybody used to say, Zenua Ofono, Zenua Chi. I mean, everyone respects giants. So today, when you think about this bottle of soda, think of a giant like Ofono. There are other giants in the Bible, I mean, in, in our world today, that I've not seen with my eyes. I mean, I saw Ofono on TV, newspapers, I never met him physically. But this one is also a giant. Are you ready to listen? Okay, be quiet because I have a number of stories to tell you. I have not seen this giant in person. But this guy was called uh, Ring, Ring Court. Ring? Yes, he was 15 years old and he was already 8 Fit. He was taller than Ofono. At 15 years, he lives in Sudan, Africa. Yes, he was around 8 feet and 4 inches tall. That is the guy. Okay? There was another Ofono, another giant guy. He was called Robert Wadlow. He was called who? When he was 13 years, he was around 7 feet and 4 inches. That is around 2.2 meters. Mm -hmm. Here he is standing next to his, uh, next to a grown-up man, a very grown-up man. And for him, he's a young man. Can you imagine today, teachers, can you imagine having an Ofono uh, called Robert? In your class, I think 13 years can also be in primary 7, right? Do we have some 13 years in P7? And then you have a, a student, a pupil in primary 7, who is this tall? Can you call him up easily to say you didn't do homework? Come, I give you a good word. You know? The teacher is saying he just can't, you know? It would be so hard. To admit him in this school or any other school because you're scared of how I <laughs> and uh, Robert kept growing and growing okay and when he was around 20 are you seeing him there he was around 20 years old and he was standing next to the hotel clerk where he had slept they had to add up two beds you know when you're in a hotel, they give you a bed to sleep. Someone is talking. They have to give you a bed to do what? So when this guy, Robert, visited that hotel, they had to add up two beds because he was very tall and he was also very huge. But still, they were not enough for him. Uh, sometimes when he would enter a house, most of the houses, he would not be able to fit because they were short for him. Would you like to be that tall? Ah, uh -huh. And I want to tell you, Robert Wadlow was very big, but he was also a kind and loving man. What do we say? Amen. He loved his mother so much, and people used to call him the gentle giant. All of us, the gentle giant giant so not it doesn't mean because you're so tall and so huge you have to always be unkind okay it was rare for giants to be kind so this robert wadlow was known to be gentle and he was referred to as the gentle giant was that beautiful was that a beautiful story was that a beautiful story okay do you want more stories Let's go to the Bible. Sorry. Sorry for that. Okay. Now let's turn to our Bibles. I hope you have brought your Bibles. Let me see them. Let me see the Bibles. 
How will you fight giants with no Bibles? Let's see Bibles. Let's see Bibles. Raise them up. Mm. Okay, one, two. That's very good. I ought to give you a gift. I ought to give you a what? After here, come for a gift, the two of you. We have already seen that giants are normally not gentle. They are normally not. Hey, you're not answering. They are normally not. Gentle. So in the Bible, there are soldiers that had a giant. I'm sure you have heard of this story. There was a giant called Goliath. Called who? Goliath. He used to fight in the army from the army of the Philistines. He was actually a Philistine. He was a Philly. Okay, this thing is not just a minute. Um, Brother Paul, help me. Okay, don't fight. Keep calm. We could do without it. It's easier to work with PowerPoints when you have a clicker, but maybe we may have to do without it for now. Uncle Paul, okay. Let's continue. Let's pray once again. Dear Lord, once again, we ask you to bring our attention together to the throne of mercy as we sit here to learn. Be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, in the Bible, we have a story of a giant called Goliath. Called who? Goliath. Many times in the Bible time, when the nations were fighting against each other, and they had giants in their midst, even if they had one or two, they would be assured to be the winners. Someone is talking. They would be assured to be the winners. I mean... The other opponents, the people they are fighting against, would automatically be intimidated by the size of a giant. Are we together? Are we together? Yes. Uh-huh. So that giant you're seeing on the screen was of the tribe of the Philistines. And Goliath stood over nine feet tall. Nine feet Tall. All the giants we have seen have been in the range of seven and eight. But Goliath was nine feet tall. And he carried an enormous sword and spear. He carried a very, very huge sword. And a what? And a spear. You had to be a giant to carry it. So the moment he stepped somewhere, everyone got shaking. And he also had a coat of armor. A coat of? You know a coat of armor? The soldiers dress up things to protect them from bullets. Eh? On the sh here in the chest. And then on the head. To protect the head. You know? Something like that. So he had a coat of armor. And another thing about Goliath. He was very rude. And cruel. Rude and? 
He hated God. That was the worst. He hated God. And he hated God's people. Can you imagine hating God and hating God's people? One day, once upon a time, once, up, once upon a time, Goliath decided to camp on one hillside with all the soldiers of the Philistines. Can you see that? They marched up to the hill that overshow, I mean, that, that could be able, where they could be able to oversee the other side of the Israelites. And between the hill where they camped with Goliath, there was a valley that led to the next hill where the Israelites also camped. Goliath had a sword with him, a huge sword and a huge shield and a huge spear. And he stood on top of that hill and sh kept shouting to the Israelites, choose a man among you. Let him come down here in the valley. So he would go from the hill, go to the valley that connected to the next hill where the Israelites were, or where the Israelites were. And he would shout to them and say, Choose a man among you. Let him come down and fight me. If he kills me, we become your slaves. And if I kill him, you Israelites become our slaves. Which tribe was uh, Goliath coming from? The Philly. Times. So the Israelites trembled with a lot of fear. Even their king Saul got afraid. Goliath was too big and too strong according to their mind. God's people forgot that God, the God of heaven, our compassionate king is a mighty man of all. He's a mighty man of all. Wow. Yes. So Goliath camped up there on the hill for 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 20, 30, 40. 40. Can you imagine for 40 days someone irritating you like that? Is that an easy joke? Is it an easy joke? No. For 40 days, Goliath was there. And God's people kept trembling the more. Beautiful story. Beautiful. Sorry. Has a good part of it. Somewhere far away, there was a young man called David. There was a young man called he used to fear God. He used to listen to God. He used to sing for God. He used to pray. He used to study God is what? There is a lot of talking that side. Are those the giants here? I'll wait for you to settle. David, a little far away from where the battle was meant to be was there taking care of sheep. He was a little shepherd. He was taking care of his father's sheep and he was such a brave boy. Why was he brave? Because he feared. Because he feared. Don't just look at the photos and forget to listen. Why was he brave? Because he feared God. One day, one as he was taking care of the sheep of his father, a strong, huge bear came to eat one of the sheep. Do you know what David did? He got a sling and picked a rock and tied the rock in a, a sling and used it and swung it and hit the bear. And the bear fell down and died because David had the power of... He had the power of who? And another time, a lion also tried to do the same. And still David killed it with the same string or sling. 
S L I N G. With a what? A sling. So God was training David to be brave. He had planned for him to be a king. David had three of his brothers in the army, in the Israelite army. And they were also part of that team of the Israelites that was being intimidated. Are we following? So he kept thinking about them. He wondered if they were still alive or they had died on war, in war or they were starving. He really longed to see them. And as he was still thinking about them, his father called upon him and told him, David, I'm thinking about your three brothers in the army. I wish you to go there and take them some food and see if they are still alive and if they are still doing well. David was very excited. David was very and the next morning, he set up with the food and walked all the way to where they had camped the Philist against the Philistine army. He moved. It was a sunny day. It was a very long distance. I can imagine he went hills, went valleys, went hills, and went valleys. And there David reached and saw a huge army of the Philistines standing on one side of the hill against the Israelites, this other side of the hill. And as he looked on, he saw a giant once again. What is his name? Standing in the valley in between the two hills and challenging God and challenging God's people and saying, I call upon you once again. Send a man from your army. If he fights against us, against me, if he kills me, we become your slaves. And if I kill him, you become our by this time, the Israelites had lost all the power and the courage and the hope. They knew that according to Goliath's size as a giant, they could not manage. David asked the soldier, who is that? He asked one of the soldiers, and the soldier said, that is Goliath. Simply run very fast before he does what? Before he kills you wake up your neighbor this lady oh gentle boy he is sleeping goliath say uh david said why wait a bit why are you letting goliath insult the army of god insult god's people and insult our mighty god the soldiers listened to david and went and told King Saul, there is this young boy called David who is courageous and seems to wish to try up against, try to fight against Goliath. And the king quickly called David. And David told him, and King Saul told David, You're such a young boy. You can't fight that guy. He's a giant. And David said, I will. The Lord helped me kill a bear and kill a lion. And I know he will help me deliver me from the wicked Philistine. Remember, Goliath did not fear God. Did not fear now, the king in courtesy of David, he decided to give him his armor. He gave him a big shield and gave him a sword and gave him a what? Yes, he gave him a sword, a shield, and an armory to wear to protect himself against the attacks of the giant Goliath. When David tried them on, he realized they were too heavy than he could hold. And he remembered before, when the Lord was delivering him from the wild beasts, he did not need that. All he needed is to trust in who? And so quickly he excused himself and ran to the near brook, a small water string or spring or stream, and picked five round smoothly shaped stones. How many stones? Five. five. There he is. Are you seeing him? And he ran quickly down to meet Goliath, to 
go stand by where he could spot Goliath very well. And when Goliath saw him, he shouted at him with all anger. He was so raged in his heart. He said, look at this young boy. You're coming to me with stones. You think I am a dog. You know, he said, I'm going to cut your head off, give it to the birds and the beasts to eat you up. That was enough to intimidate David, but he didn't get moved even a little bit. Do you remember our title? Do you remember the title of our story today? What does it say? Alone. All of us. Alone against a giant. This is the point. So David looked at Goliath. And he looked at God in his heart. And he said, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Goliath was coming with all this huge armory. But David was coming in the name of the? The name of the Lord, that compassionate king. The Philistine soldiers laughed. What did they do? They looked at this stupid young boy. How can he come against their giant? They actually laughed and said, this is a won battle already. And the Israelite soldiers began to... To tremble. They began to tremble. tremble. They knew that, they, that Goliath would kill David. They wondered, and what would happen next? If Goliath kills David, we are going to become slaves forever. But David was not afraid. He told Goliath, the Lord does not serve with swords and spears. He will give me victory. What did he say? The Lord does not serve with swords and spears. He will give me victory. Who would like to be that courageous? You need to love that compassionate king, the king of David. Now that was already too much for Goliath. He roared with anger. He grabbed up his spear and he marched towards David. And instead of David running away, he also ran towards Goliath. And he quickly put the stone, the rock, in that sling. That rock. Are you seeing that? He put the wrong in the uh, rock in a sling and kept swinging it and swing. Can he try to swing? And I see he tried to swing it and swing it. Okay, that's enough. And he sw kept swinging it as he was running towards Goliath. Remember, he was coming from a hill down to where? To Goliath. And as he prayed, he threw the, the stone, the rock, into the face of Goliath. The Lord himself followed that rock until it hit a point where Goliath had not protected himself. Remember, he was all dressed with huge armory. He knew he was well protected. But the stone was led by God and it hit directly where it was left. And him covered that target was done by Jesus the compassionate king. And immediately the rock hit Goliath. He fell down and died. When the Israelite army men saw this, they got so much courage and they ran after the army of the Philistines. And the Philistines, seeing their own giant dying down, falling down to death, they ran. They had no choice. They had no courage. And there, the battle was won by Israelites. What do we say? And David got victory over the enemy of the Lord. 
Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. These Philistines that were laughing before at the Israelites, do you think they were laughing anymore? No. Could they laugh anymore? No. It was so much trouble for them. David won the battle against the giant because he trusted who? God. He trusted who? You're not answering strongly. He trusted who? God. He, trust, he trusted God. He did his small part and he left God to do the big. He left God to do the big. Every time you're fighting a giant, you need to do your small part faithfully and leave the huge part for God, the mighty giant. Friends, the God who gave David victory over Goliath wants to give you victory against your giants. You didn't hear that. The God who gave David victory over the giant Goliath is here today to give you victory over all your giants. Amen. Did you hear that? The God who gave victory to David over the giant Goliath is here today to give you victory over all your giants. Amen. I want a stronger man. And I want to tell you one of the strongest giants disturbing young boys here and girls and us ladies and gentlemen is called who all of us? Me. All of us. Me. That is a terrible giant. He has moved pastors. He has moved presidents. He's moving everybody. That giant called who? Me. But Jesus, our compassionate king, is giving us a promise in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 Verse 54, 57. Can we read it together? First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. One, two, three, go. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. How many would like to say it once again together? Thanks be to God. One more time. Thanks be to God. No one else is as strong and energetic enough and big to save us from our giants. Like who? God himself. When you have God, you have it all. What did I say? When you have God, all of us, when you have God, you have it all. Wake up your neighbors that are sleeping. So I want us to fill the gap. God gives us God gives us this gift is given to us by Jesus, our compassionate king. When I see somebody talking, I am tempted to keep quiet. Okay, let's fill in gaps in our memory verse. One, two, three, go. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 57 a little harder now uh-huh through our lord jesus christ one more time through our lord jesus christ okay let's read it together thanks be to god who does the victory mm -hmm. through our lord jesus christ uh-huh First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. Okay. You're such good boys and girls. Now we only have letters. Let's try our memory verse again. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. Seven. How many would like to say, Jesus gives me victory. I can do all things <clears throat> through Christ who strengthens me. Victory is given to me through my compassionate. And through Jesus Christ, all our sins are forgiven. All our sins are 
And we are more than conquerors in this, through this Jesus, the compassionate King. Boys and girls, we need to be thankful to God for he has really given us the power to overcome. He has actually overcome on our behalf. He has overcome the giant called sin. All we have to do is do our little small part. Who can tell me what's our little small part to do in this battle? Yes? So, praying. Speak it louder. Thank you so much. Is it hard to pray? Sometimes it is. If you don't know the value of prayer. All that God requires of us is to do what? Is to do what? Pray. Is to do what? Aren't you all of you? Yes. To pray. Let's read the promise. First John chapter 5 verse 14. Let's read it together. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. I thought of teaching you a song that is called, This is the Confidence. It talks about this verse. But let me sing a simpler version of it because of time. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. First John 5 14. First John 5 14. Do you want to try with me? Do you want to try with me? Okay, let's try one more time. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Are we ready? If we ask anything, According to his will, he heareth us. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. First John 5 14. First John 5 14. Anything you'll ask God, have the confidence, have the that he heareth us. This giant Goliath was very huge, very big and scary. He was shouting at the Israelite soldiers. He had so many mean things to say. He insulted God himself. The Israelites were in God's army, but they were afraid. They thought we are too weak. God can't save us from this big giant. We are going to die. I'm here for one purpose. I'm here for one. I'm here to sell a compassionate king that I have tested for the years I have and I've come to believe. I have read about him. I have listened to testimonies. I am 100% sure that he's more than strong to deliver you according to his according to his will. According to his and he has promised us according to his word that he will deliver us. You don't have to doubt him. Okay. Who is still listening? How many of us have heard a voice before telling you that science paper you're going to fail? Who has ever heard something like that? A small whisper behind you. This time round, this science paper, I'm going to fail. Okay. Who has had a whisper telling him or her that I will not make it in my PLO E? Can I see candidates here? Candidates? Have you had a voice telling you no, you cannot get four aggregates? How many believe we can get four aggre aggregates here at Costa Demonstration National Primary School? God bless you. Alone against the world. A giant. Your giant might be PLOE. Now, Satan is so bad. He will whisper to you and say, You are such a bad boy. 
You are such a bad girl and you're such a bad teacher. God can never save you. And he will bring forward all the bad things you have done. He's trying to throw all the giants against you. Are you going to feel so sad? If he throws against you all the bad things you have done, some people may not know about them, but the devil knows, and you also, and you also, the devil knows them, and you also know. So you begin feeling sad. You're in class and you're feeling sad. You're in church and you don't want to listen. You're walking on the streets and you feel like you're not worthy. You come to church, they call you to sing and you feel you're not worthy. All these things, the devil is throwing them against you. Who is still following? Okay? Make sure you don't let anyone next to you sleep. I want to tell you something that God has already given us victory. And if we trust him and if we pray because already Jesus was born to give us victory, we are more than conquerors. All of us, we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Jesus was born as a redeemer. As a what? To save us from our sins and to give us power not to sin again. Not to sin. Do you believe you can live a sinless life? Yes. Jesus is coming to take children who are living a sinless life. It is very possible. If it wasn't possible, Jesus wouldn't have come. He's saying, let the little ones come to me. I'm going to change their hearts. They are filled with, let's read together, sorrow, jealous, sin, death. They fear death. How many fear death here? Aha, uh -huh, that's a giant. Jesus came to win the giant for you. Anger, aha, uh -huh, hatred, selfishness, disobedience, and sin. And Jesus wants to fill the heart with new life. And this is the new life. Let's read together. Faith, obedience, love, gentleness, patience, joy, peace, and goodness. This is what he expects of us all children listening, watching, and here with us. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. You could look at this picture and you start to tremble because Jesus is looking at the book of life and you're sure he's judging you already. He's saying this girl is such a bad girl. He is always stealing. Is that true? That's what the devil is whispering. Some people even fear to preach because they think Jesus is judging them against their sins. Yes, Ecclesiastes is saying something. Let's read together Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 14. God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Friends, judgment is good. But let me tell you something. God is work. Jesus' work is not to condemn us. Is not to. Please wake up and sit properly. God, Jesus' work is not to condemn us. Don't sit there and feel so sad. Jesus is a friend. If it wasn't so, if he wasn't a compassionate king, he would not have come. Say he would not have come. Answer, I mean, speak louder. He would not have come. Jesus is looking at a book. There are those good things you've done. There are those bad things you've done. They are all written there. But when he comes to the sin part where you have committed bad things or sins, he will simply tell God the Father that his sins are gone. And now he has my goodness. He no longer listens to Satan. I have given him the victory. I have saved him from his sins. We can allow him to be 
in our kingdom. What do we say? What do we say? Jesus has already canceled your sins because that's the good news he came to give us. He came to die on the cross because of those sins. You simply have to believe. How many just want to believe that Jesus is true according to his promise? God bless you so much. This is what we call the good news. There is no better news than that. It is indeed good news. Many times when you open the Bible and you want to read and you're reading somewhere, the devil tries to tell you you're not good enough. You can't measure up to this. But Jesus whispers, oh, we don't have pictures. Okay, something is. Okay, can we have it's again off? Okay, let's pray, dear Lord. Once again, we ask you to hold on our machines and give us an opportunity to see the pictures and enjoy our sermon. Keep us in the spirit of listening to your voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We will be continuing as we try to see what is happening.
Okay, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for listening to our prayer. Thank you so much. Bless us more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, listen. Listen. So, we have said that the good news is that Jesus doesn't, doesn't condemn us. Doesn't? He simply talks to God the Father and says, I have already died for their sins. He will say, that boy, that girl has repented of his, all her sins. Is that good news? Is that good news? That's what we call the gospel. We call it the what? We call it the gospel. Okay? Maybe you're here and you have giants in your life. Okay? These are wrong things that you easily do. You love talking in class. You love fighting. How many of us here are struggling with giants of talking while I'm preaching? Look at this boy. There is a giant in him forcing him to fight. Okay? All those giants, Jesus is willing to receive them and fight them on your behalf. Jesus wants you to be a good boy and girl, a good lady and a good gentleman. Will you say yes to Jesus? Yes. Will you say yes to Jesus? Yes. Friends, Jesus is a friend. He's a compassionate king. He's a compassionate. You can go and sit down or kneel down or as you lie on your bed and tell him all your secrets. Tell him all your uh, and all your fears. There are some girls who fear mathematics. You, because you know your grandparents, your parents never did mathematics. So you think it is a clan disease. Let that generation break and you start a generation of math students that do not fear mathematics. What is it that you fear? Hmm? Talk to who? Talk to who? Yes. Friends, I want to tell you one of the giants I used to uh, that used to disturb my life when I was as young as you. Who would like to know? Promise me that you're going to be quiet. Okay, be quiet and listen. Some years back in 1990s, I was in primary five. But before I got to primary five, or towards primary five and the first term of primary five, I used to have a lot of anger. A lot of anger. And I was easily irritated. And I didn't like it if anybody touched my young ones. I was a big sister to a boy and a young girl. Okay? And most of the times I was present as their big sister. And any time you touched them, I would lose it. I would. I had a giant in me. So many times I would escape home with shorts inside. If it's a trouser, we used to sleep in 90s that were long pants. Eh? So you would fold them inside the skirt so that when you're getting out, mom is not aware that you're about to do what? To fight. You're about to do what? Of course, she knew I was good at fighting and she had prayed about it. Okay? But she would never know that that is the day I'm going to fight. So if here at Kosa is where my brother is standing and one of your children, okay, or your pupils disturbs my siblings and they come and tell me, I would wait for you somewhere. Okay? And then out of the blue, I would fight. And my rule was, if I fight with you, I have to tear apart your cloth. I loved tearing uniforms. So that you have a remembrance that that girl fought with me, 
even tore apart my uniform. I had that giant in me. And many times I would fight. But still, I loved God. I loved you. But I had a what? A giant. How many of us have begun to think of the giants you have in your heart, in your life? And many people knew I was a very good girl. But I had a what? I had a what? One day I fought with a best friend of mine. And I tore her uniform to pieces. That is the day the Lord delivered me. She was a total orphan. Do you know a total orphan? And my mother exchanged my uniform for her. And I had to go to school with a torn uniform. That is the day Jesus came through for me and saved me from a giant. From that day, I have never fought with anyone by the grace of who? I always tell Jesus, so and so has done this for me. And Jesus, my compassionate king, fights my giants. What do we say? Amen. I am here to sell that compassionate king. I am there to, I'm here to tell you, he will help you overcome. He will help you over. Are you lazy in class? When you're washing dishes, does it take you a whole day? Talk to Jesus. Talk to anybody here had thought of a giant. Who has thought of a giant in their lives? Who has thought of a giant in their lives? Don't tell me you're already perfect. I know we are going to be ready. We are going to be perfected by Jesus Christ. But do you have a giant in your life? Is there something you need to get rid of? Is there something you fear and you want God to help you face it? If you're there, stand up. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. And this same God that delivered me from the giant of fighting is going to deliver you from that very giant. That same compassionate king that delivered David from the giant Goliath is ready to help you. As I sing this song softly, I request you to close your eyes and give all your giants to God. Tell him today is the day of salvation. Enough is enough. Tell him I want to get the best of the results. Tell him what you want to get in your exams. Tell him what you want your parents to see in you. Tell him how you want to share his good news with many others. Are we ready? Okay. Close your eyes and talk to Jesus. And I will sing this song. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in to them, come in to them, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart. Lord Jesus, come in to them, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends. Jesus loves you so much. And he wants to give you a righteous life. And he's giving it to you for free. You only have to do a small part of praying and studying the word of? Studying the word of? Don't forget to study the word of God. And what will become of your life? You will be a happy, happy child. A happy, happy and a happy, happy person. And then you start asking yourself, what can I fear? 
if the Lord is with me, what can I fear? Let's say it together. If the Lord is with me, what can I fear? There is a song that says, how can I fear? Time is not on our side. I will not teach you this song today. But I promise the chaplain that we are going to work out a program of learning many scripture songs. We have so many, over a hundred songs that you can learn. You can sing the entire Bible in scripture. How many would like to learn that? Okay, chaplain will teach you. Let's sing one song we know. Omulenzi omtom. Daudi never mulo. Do we know that song? Okay, let's sing together, huh? Omulenzi omtom. Daudi never mulo. Omulenzi omtom. Ya sabanga yesu. Omulenzi omtom. Ya sala akaga. Ama inja atano. Gokage ya londa. Limuku goya lisa, mumvu molentono. Limuku goya lisa, mumvu molentono. Oh, nali zunza zunza zunza, nali zunza zunza. Nali kuwa goliasi, na gwawasi webu. Do we know that song? You don't know it? I thought of singing it in English. I imagine you know it in Uganda. Let's try it together. Okay, let's go. Oh, Mulenzi, um, Tom. Daudi never. Do what I'm doing. Oh, Mulenzi, um, Toya, Sabanga, yes. Oh, Mulenzi, um, Tom. Yasala, Akagam. Amainja, Atano, Gokage, Alonda. Limuku, Goya, Lisa, Mumvu, Molentono. Limu kugoya lisa, mumvu mulentono. Nali zunza zunza zunza, nali zunza zunza. Nali kuba goliasi, na gwawansi webu. Okay, sit down. I know you will learn that one. Friends, we have finished and we know and I know and I believe that from today you're going to walk with Jesus doing your small part to live a sinless life and a fearless life as a victorious boy and girl, lady and gentleman. How many believe that by the grace of God? Amen. Here are the promises. Chaplain, bring the sheets of paper. Give them. We have Put all the promises we wanted to share with you this afternoon on these sheets of paper. Who is fighting? You? Look here, boys and girls. Send away that giant in the name of Jesus. Send away that giant in the name of who? Be like David and overcome that giant of fighting. Okay? So we are going to give you the crafts. They have different promises. It was an activity, but time is not on our side. What you're going to do is you're going to read these promises. And you're going to put them in your heart. And you're going to claim them in the name of who? Let's read some of the samples here. Let's read together. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. And he shall sustain thee. Psalm 55. Verse 22. Okay, that's one of the promises. We use promises to fight fear. To fight fear. Fear is a giant that is destroying many people today. Don't fear to be judged. Don't fear judgment anymore. Just know your Savior is there. Just know your Savior is there. He is the judge. And he has already done it for you. Okay? We have another promise. We have another promise in Hebrews chapter 7. Verse, sit down. Teachers, come on.